Good evening and welcome to our service here at Bible Baptist Temple on Sunday evening. And we're so glad that you can join us for this live broadcast. And uh, so we're going to take a moment and we're going to sing some songs, starting out uh, with a great favorite, uh, Jesus Saves. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus Saves, Jesus Saves, spread the tidings all around. Uh, Jesus Saves. And so I'm going to ask Kyle Mullis if he'll come and lead us in this first song. And cross the waves. Onward is our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea. Echo back ye ocean caves. Her shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom. When the heart for mercy craves, sing and triumph for the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Pastor? 
Well, great. Well, we're glad that uh, you have the opportunity to find time uh, to be with us live. And so uh, this is being recorded in real time. And once again this evening, uh, we're experiencing uh, storms outside, but thankful for uh, being nice and dry inside and uh, glad that you are safe. And I hope that you are. If you have any needs at all, we'd be, could, uh, be glad to help. And if you have uh, issues maybe at your house because of the storms and so on, uh, please let us know and we will try to be uh, a help that we can. And so we're going to sing another song here, uh, a new song for us, but one that is uh, one of my favorites. And it's along this theme of Jesus Saves. So we're going to sing Hallelujah, Jesus Saves. If you don't know this one, I would encourage you to listen along uh, and learn it as we sing. mercy and for lost and desperate souls long i heard of its existence now it made the broken world though my sins may be as scarlet they be white beneath the blood and though i don't understand it i sing Jesus saves, Jesus saves, hallelujah, Jesus saves, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus saves. Who am I that you would want me, that you'd come to bear my cross? Lord, I tremble when I think of what I gained and what you lost. Who am I to come so boldly while you hold me with your love? Though I still don't understand it, I sing hallelujah. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, hallelujah, Jesus saves. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus saves. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Hallelujah, Jesus saves. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus message. If you uh, have your Bibles this evening, we're going to turn uh, to 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings uh, chapter 6, 2 Kings and chapter 6, and uh, spoke a little bit about this in, this morning, about the matter of uh, our faith. Uh, if we believe, then God will show us. So uh, if we believe, then we will see. Some say, well, if you'll show me, then I'll believe. And he let us know uh, that if we're one of his sheep, we will understand. But the reason they didn't understand is because they were not uh, of his sheep. I want to take that topic uh, again tonight and go in the direction of understanding uh, that your sight uh, that is your physical sight. And I'm going to use the word sight when it comes to a matter uh, of physical seeing. Uh, gets in the way of your vision. Uh, your sight, your physical seeing, getting in the way uh, of your vision, i.e. your spiritual ability uh, to understand that which uh, God wants us to know. And so 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, going to begin there in verse 8 and read a few verses, and then we'll continue in the passage as we have uh, our message tonight. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved him there not once or twice. 
Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would help us. As we hear from your word tonight, Lord, I pray for your empowerment, Lord, to speak your word. Lord, I don't need physical energy or ability as much as I need your spiritual power. Lord, to have this carry much farther than my voice. Lord, may your spirit carry it into our hearts. Help us to understand tonight what you want us to understand. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you're like me. I uh, am, may have maybe a little bit different take uh, on the world in general. I, I account it to uh, how I am and my personality. And so when it comes down to uh, simple things, maybe uh, I have a little bit uh, of a different take on them. And, and so it uh, has been all the way since I was little when I was uh, growing up. You might look into my uh, school supplies and you might see a, a pencil and you might see an eraser and uh, you might see some thumb tacks and some glue. And I saw different things there. I saw uh, rockets and airplanes and race cars. And I used to even take the glue and I would stick it uh, on the back of my hand and rub it and let it dry. And then if you did that with your hand closed and opened it, it would make you look like you were severely old and wrinkled. I mean, I had lots of fun. Uh, the only thing that I didn't do at school was my schoolwork. Uh, everything else was uh, uh, very creative, very prosperous for me. Uh, but the thing that I didn't finish was my schoolwork. I would have uh, erasers and put thumbtacks in the sides of them, and they made great tires. And I just love the sleek design of the pink rubber eraser with the, the downhill on the back and then the spoiler on the front and then the spoiler on the back. And I'd have great fun with that. And I, I found that you could take those little erasers that had the uh, prism top shape that went on the end of the pencil, and you could take those off and take your scissors and you could chop them uh, and take that triangle off and turn it upside down and slide it the other way on the pencil, uh, and you would have a great flame coming out. If you, you had an orange one uh, coming out of the back of your pencil, uh, and then you could take, you used to have the pins where you could slide the clip of the pen off and slide it instead on your pencil and then take a ruler and put it under that clip and have nice wings and a rocket ship with wings. And I mean, the, the whole works. You, you'd have to understand, uh, I kind of see the world a little bit different. Uh, some things that occur to me kind of uh, uh, make me uh, wonder. And for a long time as a child, I wondered why it was that there was a, a little something that would float into view and then it would disappear. You, you would see it in your eye and, or you see it in front of you and, and you couldn't tell, tell if it was in your eye or in the air and you tried to grab it and it wasn't there. And the more you tried to look at it, uh, the more it went away. Someone's told me later it's a, a bubbles in your eye. And, and so I, I would try to get it to float to the side and shake my head and try to get it in my view. But the more I tried to look at it, uh, the harder it was to see. Can I tell you, uh, when it comes to the matter of spiritual vision, it comes by faith. The Bible says that we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. Therefore, trying to see things that are meant to be seen uh, by spiritual vision means that when we try to focus on them, the more difficult they are to see. You say, how does it apply to our lives? Well, physical sight is what we see of the things around us. It's the way man sees life. It's the way uh, that it's explained on the news. It's the way that books will explain it to you. It's the way uh, that most people will accept life. But can I tell you that God sees life much differently than we do? Sometimes our sight gets in the way of our vision. Again, sight is the way we see things, but vision uh, is seeing from a spiritual perspective. Because of what we see in this world, it blocks us from being able to see what God wants us to see. 
I want you to take your Bible for just a moment and turn to 2 Corinthians 4 uh, and verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18. We see some statements here that are really abstract if you don't understand what they mean. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. The Bible says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Now, notice the statement there almost sounds like a, a, a paradox in itself. It says, now we look at the things not that are seen, but we look at the things that are unseen. The things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The things that we see, the things that are around us, uh, they are temporary, they're temporal, and they will one day be gone. They will one day be uh over and they, there will not be a continuation of them. But he says the things that we don't see, the things that are not seen with the human eye, these are the eternal things. And these are the things that God wants us to get a glimpse of. God wants us to see him. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. God is eternal. God's plan is eternal. God's word is eternal. Now we, on the other hand, are temporary. And our plans are temporary. Our life is temporary. The Bible says this in James 4 and verse 14. What is your life? It is even a vapor which appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. There's a lot of people concerned about their life. They're concerned about losing their life. I, I saw a pastor post that he had been a part uh, of a protest up in Michigan of the overreach of the government, trying to tell uh, churches what it is that they could and couldn't do. And the responses on uh, his post online were things like, I hope that you get uh, this. You're going to kill everybody doing this kind of thing. Well, you're an older guy. It looks like you're overweight. I bet you get it. I hope they refuse you care. Why are people so angry? Why are people having such a negative response to someone else's actions? Why? Because they think the others doing something will endanger their life. That if someone else spreads the uh, virus to them, that they could lose their life. And can I tell you, if all you have is your life here on earth, you'll be really scared to lose it. You'll be really concerned that if you were to lose this life that you have, can I tell you, you're going to lose it anyways. There's a day coming when this life will be over and you best be prepared for that which you cannot yet see. To have your life ready for the eternal. Our life will be over with. You know what our plans will end? Uh, I love what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes uh, 2 and verse 18. He says, I hated my labor because I should leave it unto the man who shall be after me and who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool. He said, I can work and work and work and lay up treasure, but the next guy may just blow it. Our lives are temporary. Our plans are tre temporary. But you see, God wants us to get a glimpse beyond what is temporary or temporal and see that which is eternal. I want you to see, first of all, the failure of sight. It's demonstrated in the life of this young man who is a, a servant of Elisha, and when he looks up, he sees the massive host of horses uh, and chariots. It's sure defeat. You see, sight fears the unknown. Notice his statement again in the end of verse 15. Alas, my master, how shall we do? What are we going to do? People are asking this question. What are we going to do uh, if the economy stays shut down? What are we going to do uh, if the virus ramps back up again? What are we going to do? How are we going to face this? What are we going to do? Can I tell you, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. And if I see it the way God sees it, God says, this is all in control. I, I don't have to fear. You see, the failure of sight looks around and it says, oh, what is the solution and when it can't see a solution, then fear sets in. You know, if we're not careful, we are living life by sight. That, if you will, is the equivalent of living life by luck. You know, I'd rather be blessed by God than lucky. A lot of people say, well, I'm just lucky, I guess. I guess it's just one of the lucky ones that haven't got it. 
I, I guess I'm just one of the lucky ones. I would rather have God's protection and blessing on my life uh, than to be lucky. I see people in the uh, store and they're scratching the tickets one after another and scratching. I see them scratch so many. I think, don't get near me. You're unlucky. <laughs> I don't want some of that to rub off on me. And they try to live life by luck. But can I tell you, all luck leaves for you is fear. Because what if you're not one of the lucky ones? What if you're what they would call one of the unlucky ones? I, I think the terminology leaves a lot to be desired because now it's just all up to fate, luck. Well, he was just unlucky, I guess. Ended up with the virus. Boy, he was the last person that should have got it. But what a run, run of bad luck. I'll tell you what, I don't want my life to be left up to luck. I would rather have it be left up to the God who has all things in control. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. It is not God's design that we live in fear. Uh, and if we are trusting our sight, what we can see, the problem is we can't see the future. So the future is a blank slate. This is how it was. This man was standing there with the hosts of the Syrians ra wrapped around about him. And he said, well, I just don't see how it is that we can make it. I don't know uh, what is going to happen. We're warned in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 and 26, that we should take no thought for your life, what we should eat or drink, and what should we should put on. He said, you know, God takes care of the fowls of the air, and he'll take care of you. Sight fails to account for the supernatural. You see, sight sees man at work. Boy, I, I sure hope they're able to come up with a cure uh, for coronavirus. I, I, I wonder if this malaria drug will make a difference. And uh, boy, I just hope uh, we're able to get enough uh, PPE for the, uh, the workers. And I, I'm just hoping that we have enough tests and we can quarantine the right people and we can do all of that. Yes, sight sees man at work, but vision sees God at work. Elisha's servant had the failure of sight. He had everything that sight would offer him, but he had no vision. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. The vision is a, a spiritual sight from God, an ability to see that which otherwise can't be seen. This was the struggle of the Syrians. They said, who is it? The king of Syria said, who is it that is a mole that's in my cabinet? Who is it that is a leaking information? They said, oh, there's no mole. There's this guy, Elisha, who's a prophet. And for some way or another, he can hear what you say in your bedchamber. Ever wonder who was telling them that information? Oh, it wasn't a little birdie. Flew from one place to the other. I mean, the best you can come up with birdies is cockatoos and parrots, and they can only repeat so much. But here he was getting divine information, vision from God into the bedchamber, uh, and he was hearing all of this. And so Elisha had no fear. He wasn't standing in the middle, uh, absolutely afraid. But here was this young man who was trusting his sight. Secondly, faith, the faith to see, the failure of sight, but the faith to see. Look at verse 16, and he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. You ever have somebody pray for you out loud? And you're kind of uh, a little patronized by their prayer. Lord, help them. They seem to have a bad attitude. Lord, help them fix their attitude. I don't know if you've ever had a mother like that or a grandmother uh, who will pray for you aloud and, and they're kind of telling God what you need to know and you're thinking, yeah, okay, 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 just go right ahead and finish up your prayer. I can imagine this young man was saying, okay, okay, my eyes are open, okay, seeing is not my problem. I see what the problem is. But Elisha was praying that his eyes would be opened so he could see what it is that God sees. He said, God, will you open his eyes? You know, many claim to have insights into this life. They claim to have the ability. Well, I, I kind of, I've heard the statement, have the world by the tail. Oh, I know how things are going. Can I tell you, you can have lots of savvy in this world, but have no spiritual knowledge. 
True insight to life doesn't come uh, by your physical sight, but it comes from the maker of life who gives you uh, this insight. And he said, God, would you open his eyes? And I think the young man could say, my eyes are open. Until God really opened his eyes. Uh, Until God gave him true vision. Notice what the Bible says here in verse 17, the second half of the verse. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. I I can imagine him going, whoa. You saw this the whole time? Yeah, I did. Whoa. Can you always see this kind of stuff? Uh, Yeah, I can. Whoa. He He went from fear to high-fiving. I mean, he's like, yeah! Oh, yeah, bring it. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Just try it. He went from fear to confidence. Not confidence in his own ability. He didn't say, okay, I'm ready to fight now. No, he was saying, hey, the battle is taken care of. God will handle it. I will step back. I'll tell you what, you can thumb through your checkbook. Uh, you can scroll through your bank statement uh, and you can look for answers to your problems. But can I tell you, you need the vision of God that God will supply uh, all of your need. You may say to yourself, uh, I don't know how I can uh, protect myself. I'll be real careful. I'll wear a mask. I'll sanitize my hands. Uh, I'll do all those things, but can I tell you, uh, you need a God in heaven who will uh, support you, who will uh, keep you safe. Unfortunately, we've got to the point of trusting in man's abilities. I think I'm going to lose it the next time I see another celebrity that tells us, stay at home, wash your hands, do all these things, keep us all safe. If a drone flies overhead that starts warning me and they sold some to the state of Georgia, so they may fly over our city. I have an answer for that drone. Uh, It's about a a 75 cent buckshot uh, that I can put in my shotgun and and disable a drone. You say, why? Uh, Because we seem to think that the answer is buzzing over people's head and saying, stay inside, Uh, get off the beaches, Uh, don't do this, don't do that. Can I tell you, uh, although we ought to be careful, we ought to be safe, the answer is not in man. The answer is trusting in God. God opened his eyes to see what was really going on. Boy, the faith, when we have faith in God, it is rewarded by the unexpected. I think that man, that young man was standing there and he thought all, he knew all there was of the information, but he really had no clue what was going on. Have you stopped to consider that the Lord may come back soon? Have you stopped to consider that this world turning its back on God, God's trying to get people's attention? If you stop to consider there's a whole lot more going on here than a matter of a virus. And God is working in ways that we cannot see. It's estimated that three times the number of people that would normally attend church would get online and watch a sermon just like this. You say, what is God doing? I don't know what's God doing, what God is doing, uh, but I can tell you this, when God is at work, We need spiritual vision to see it and not see things as they are with our own eyes, but to see what it was that God is doing. Now, what Elisha said was really true. He said to him, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with him. To which I'm sure this young man who had not yet had his eyes open uh, said, yeah, right. I'm counting. One, two, that's us. Can you see how many? I can't even count how many are in front of us. I can't even count the number of chariots uh, and horses. And God opened his eyes. And sure enough, the mountains were full of horses, of chariots, of fire round about. If God be for us, who can be against us? You know, it was true. All of that was true before his eyes were open. Before Elisha prayed for him, that was all true. I sometimes think that people think something's not true because they don't believe it. You not believing it doesn't change it from being true. If it's true, it's true of itself. 
Uh, so much of our uh, society now believes in a, a relativism uh, where they believe that it's only true if they believe it and it's their truth. And uh, we even have uh, people like Oprah saying, you've got to have uh, your truth and, and you do you and you do it your way. Can I tell you, there is a truth uh, that's not true because you believe it or because I believe it, uh, but it's true because God has said it. And it was true even before the servant saw it. Just because your eyes are not open doesn't mean that it's not happening. We live in a world that says what you see is what you get. But can I tell you, there's so much more than what we see. When we have faith in God, we're rewarded with vision that sees, as we saw in 2 Corinthians 4.18, the unseen. We see what it is that God is doing. Romans 3, verse 3, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, and every man a liar. Their faith does not cause what is to not be there. It wasn't as if when he had faith, it created those horses and chariots of fire. They were there all along, and Elisha was just praying that he could somehow see it. And finally he saw you know, this isn't the end of the passage, though. This is, it goes on to show us not only the faith to see, but the folly of the sightless. Read on with me, if you would, in verse 18. And when he, they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way neither this city, follow me and I will bring you to the man to whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. We see that he beckons to these men and, and we see that they are foes of the people of God. Uh, and as these foes came, he said, oh, uh, God, would you please smite them with blindness? And they went blind. And he said, I will lead you. I will guide you to where you're looking to go. And he guides them into the hilly, rocky country uh, of Samaria thus putting them at a great disadvantage, having put them in a place where they could easily be attacked, uh, and their blindness caused them to not be able to see. Now those who go against God are doomed to spiritual blindness. This is a picture, as we saw in the life of Samson, who uh, was one who would not obey God, would not follow God, and eventually the Bible says that they put out his eyes. And he had to be led about, the Bible says, by a, a young man. He would have to say, which, which way is the door? Which way is the door? And the young man would say, just put your hand right here on my shoulder and I'll, I'll show you where the door is. And, and which way is the, is the water? And, and, and which way is the food? And uh, can you show me where my plate is? And this was once a great and strong man. But due to his blindness, he had to have another lead him. In our world, we have many who claim to see and yet are spiritually blind. Walking in this darkness without the direction. Walking without the ability to know where they're going. They're easily deceived. I see this. They would not have gone into Samaria. They would have not gone this direction. And yet they were easily deceived by this prophet Elisha who was leading them to a place not to get them destroyed. This was not Elisha's intent, but rather to put them at a place of disadvantage. I'm thankful for the mercy and the grace of God upon this host. I'm thankful that even though they were walking in darkness, that God gave them a second chance. Matter of fact, when they get to the hills of Samaria, as the story continues there, uh, the king of Israel says, what do I do? Uh, should I smite them? And he said, no, don't smite them. Instead, feed them well and send them home to their king. It's an interesting thought. Feed them well. Well, what do soldiers want? Well, they want food, that's for sure. Any grown man uh, wants a good meal. And so the Bible says he put together his best provisions. And as he fed these men, they ate heartily. And then he said, I want to send you back. And he sent them back to the master. And the Bible says that the Syrians came no, no more into Israel. So what is that talking about? Well, can I tell you, if you are walking in darkness... There is a God who loves you. He doesn't want you to be blind anymore. And although you don't deserve it, although the Bible calls you an enemy of God, if you are without Christ as Savior, He doesn't want you to stay that way. 
Why don't you take your Bible for just a moment and go to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. God does not want you to stay living in this darkness. 2 Corinthians 4. You may say, I'm not living in darkness. My eyes are wide open. Can I tell you, uh, it is a spiritual darkness. One that causes us to go in circles, trying to figure out the answers to our problems when God himself wants to show himself to you. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. This is talking about those who are lost, those not who are saved, but those who are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He said, we have received the light, and we want you to have the light too. This was an amazing confrontation in which the hosts of the chariots uh, of fire of God could have consumed them in a moment. Very, very quickly, it could have been cons- they could have been consumed. They could have lost the battle. But instead, they were led in this darkness to a place where they got some light. They were shown the mercy that God has. And rather than being killed that day, they were given a second chance. I don't know about you. Maybe you've walked in darkness as these blind soldiers did. Maybe God is reaching out to you to give you another chance. Are you stumbling around in the darkness? I've been there. When I was in college... We shared a bathroom, and they called it a, a suite, and so it was our suite mates were the uh, people on the other side, and so there was four in one room and four in another, and they, they shared in a the bathroom there, and there was a little corridor with a, uh, a set of sinks on one side, and uh, on the other side, there was a shower here, and at the other end, uh, a restroom. The way my room was situated, I was uh, on the opposite end from the restroom. On the near end was the shower, and so be able to go uh, to the restroom at night, I had to go in uh, and through this corridor and get to the part uh, that was the restroom. Many times I would go in there half asleep, and of course, you know, you don't want to turn the lights on because your roommates or suite mates uh, might complain about the light. Hey, turn it off. Hey, we're trying to sleep. And so I thought I would navigate my way through there, and all would have been good, except for somebody left one of the bottom drawers in that uh, sink area open, and I had no idea about that. There was very little light, and as I was uh, walking forward, I don't know how I do it. To this day, I don't know how I did it. I did a little trip, and then I stepped in the drawer. I couldn't figure out why there was uh, brushes and bottles and all kinds of things on the floor or what I was tripping over, but as I went into the drawer, I tried to get out of the drawer, and my other foot got caught up in it, and I went flat on my face. Here I was, stumbling about in the darkness. I was giving it my best guess. I had really no idea what I was tripping over. Can I tell you, God does not want us to walk in the darkness. He wants us to walk in the light. He wants to open our eyes. And if you, like these soldiers, have found yourself stumbling in the darkness, maybe you're trying to reason out how everything works in life. I don't think any of us are trying to live life as a failure. But can I tell you, God wants you to succeed not just in this life, but he wants you to be prepared for eternity. You don't have to walk in the darkness. He said, the gospel, this is the message of Jesus Christ. He come to open the eyes of the blind, to shine light unto them. And these men were shown grace in the mercy of God that day. And they went home to their master, sight restored, never to return to that battle. Can I encourage you this evening? We preach not ourselves, but the Lord Jesus Christ, that you might have the light. And if you do have the light, can I tell you, don't walk in the fear. Fear not. They that be with us are more than they that be against us. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help us as we listen to your word tonight. Lord, may we take courage like this young man who was afraid because he didn't see the great host that was on his side. 
Lord, I'm thankful there's a great host of things we cannot see that are here. And you said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Lord, may we have spiritual vision to see. Lord, may we see people hurting around us. May we have genuine compassion on them. Not as this world does that backs away, trying to preserve their own life, but rather a desire to see those who are in darkness come to know the light. Lord, I pray that you bless this message to our hearts. I thank you for it. Thank you for that day when you turned the light on for me. Thank you that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, shined to me. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. I did want to add just a couple of things here uh, at the end of the service. Uh, don't forget, we had made this announcement this morning in the uh, After Fellowship on Facebook, but maybe some of you didn't see that. Uh, but this Wednesday, I would like to have a drive uh, up fellowship. And uh, by that, there'll just be a portion of time and we'll send an email out and post it online as well. Uh, but we would like to have a drive in fellowship probably between 5 and 7 p.m. Uh, have people just come up uh, and we'll stay distant so you can drive up and uh, just, of course, only come with your family, those who you live with and who've already uh, cross exposing that way. So uh, if you live with those folks, feel free to come with them uh, and then drive up. My wife and I would love to say hello to you. We will stay uh, the proper distance. If you have any concerns, uh, we'll wear masks or something like that uh, to just give you that distance. But uh, we definitely would love to say hi. So if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, that's about 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday. Of course, also what we're talking about is we have packaged up in Ziploc bags uh, gospel tracts to reach out to folks who maybe have concerns. Uh, one of them is on the subject of uh, COVID-19 and, and all of that and fear associated with it with a gospel message. Of course, also one of them uh, is our church brochure uh, that lets them know our website and so on, and you can let them know we're doing online services. So we want you to have those. Those will be in a station uh, where you'll be able to pull up, get out of your car. You won't contact with anybody uh, and get some of those, especially if you're still at work, uh, especially if you're going through through drive throughs or having a uh, grocery uh, pickup or something of that nature where you interact with people and you can let them know those have been put together under sanitary conditions. Uh, so what's on the inside is sanitary. They can break those open themselves. Uh, and we pray that it'll be a help uh, in witnessing to those in our community. And I pray that the fa fear of many will be, will be overcome by the faith of Jesus Christ. If we know this life is not everything, uh, but that Jesus uh, is the answer and that we have an eternal home in heaven, uh, then this is not the end. This is not uh, the end all. We're thankful and grateful to have that hope in Christ, that hope of eternal life. Uh, and so we want to share that with others. If you already uh, have your eternity settled, uh, then share that with others that may not know. I've given out a good number of these tracks already. Uh, they've been well received. And so I hope uh, that you can be a part of that. So Wednesday, uh, drive-in fellowship from about 5 to 7 p.m. supposed to be a sunny day. Uh, you stay in your car. You drive up. Say hello. We'll chit-chat for a few minutes. We'll let you drive on. Uh, and so we'll do some of that. And I would look forward uh, to seeing you. Maybe you haven't got out of the house much. Uh, we encourage you to stay safe, uh, but catch up with, with uh, us then. Uh, then, of course, we'll also have uh, our midweek service uh, streamed online. And so I uh, hope that you have a great week. Uh, God bless you, and we will talk real soon.